everyone and welcome to Carnatic Conundrums. My name is Neha and today I'm extremely honored to be sitting here with Sri Neveliyar Santana Gopalan, also affectionately referred to as Guru Neveli or Neveli Sir. So Sir is actually here for a week-long camp that he hosts in New Jersey. Uh, you came last Saturday and you're here just exactly one week until today, correct sir? Namaste Neha, I am also equally delighted to be here talking to you. Yes, every year I come for this uh, Yuva Sangeet Alahari workshop, which I consider to be the most advanced workshop I am doing mm -hmm. ever in the whole world. So this is the most advanced workshop and at this time it happened for a week. And today it's going to be the presentation of my students, whatever they have learned from the workshop, they will present it. Today is the finale day. Finale day. <laughs> so, Sir conducts, as he said, workshops worldwide, be it in America or in India. And um, we are very lucky that in New Jersey, like he said, he conducts his most advanced workshop. And with that, I think we can kind of segue into the interview itself. Uh, my first question has the context of Sir being a teacher. As all of you know, he is also a musician, a musicologist, a student himself, a performer, um, even an actor and composer, which we'll get into a little later. So the one of the hallmarks of Neveli Sir is that as soon as he started teaching in America, the standard of vocal music has shot up exponentially. I would say for about 20 years now, several Bidwans from India have been coming and teaching NRIs, but when you establish the Neveli school, it has truly elevated um, the standard that has been up till now. Mm -hmm. So, sir, can you maybe speak about that? Yeah. First, when I, come, uh, when I came here by 1991, uh, so when I first uh, came and visited U.S., I found that this is like, uh, it looks like an ideal gurukulam of those days. <laughs> so, I have been visiting U.S. for many a time to tour, for, as a concert tour, okay? Maybe we, we would have 30 concerts per tour or 20, 25 like that. So, I had a chance to go to every nook and corner of U.S. And I found that the whole of U.S. is like an ideal, uh, like, uh, you know, Gurukula forest. You know, my <laughs> ideal, uh, what, whatever was in my dream. So why do you say that? Why was it like a forest or the ideal Gurukulam? Gurukulam is because forest is, you know, in our uh, culture, be it knowledge or, uh, you know, uh, Veda, anything in abundance is likened to forest. Yeah, For example, Vidya Aranya, Veda Aranya. Uh, so then uh, slowly I thought, you know, if only I could start teaching here, the ideal atmosphere here will be helping people to associate the, you know, ideas about nature, how music has evolved and uh, this leisurely, leisureliness and leisurely ambience would uh, add up to my teaching so that I can expect ideal students mm -hmm. from here, which happened eventually. So it was the eagerness that you found through your concert tours of people not only want listening to Carnatic music but expressing interest in learning. Like, I could see this uh, Shraddha, that is uh, focus. So focus is the main thing. Uh, here I could see people, the children, the learners could uh, really focus. If I teach some a rare thing, okay, they feel very proud to take it and preserve it. And when I come the next time, I have a feeling that I have safely handed over something precious to them. <laughs> so, in other words, in simple words, I can say, you know, I can teach even the rarest of a rare composition uh -huh. here to a student. So there is, uh, they take it, everything in an open mind, with an open mind. Maybe it's also that um, 
it's the scarcity. I mean, now with the improvement of technology, we can always call our gurus, Skype them, WhatsApp call, you know, even we can text them, email them. But back then, when your guru would come, it would be for such a short period of time. So it was this eagerness to learn and absorb everything in that time. Yeah, exactly. Because you didn't know when the next time would be. Exactly, exactly. So that is a feeling of thrill for the teacher also, you know. So everything he utters is being absorbed. <laughs> so, see, it is the same case everywhere. I do agree, but in the US it is special. Apart from my concert tours, I decided that this is the place to teach. America. <laughs> America, yeah. So, I didn't mind the level of students. So, I know I experimented a lot. Mm -hmm. So, I have uh, come across some students who could not even stay on a note, okay? But it was uh, a challenge for me and by God's grace, I could build a, a what to say, a system or a, a way through which I could uh, connect to each one of them, though not directly, but through the web of my disciples. Mm -hmm. Such as? Sri Ranjani Akka, yeah, yeah. Kasturi, Shiva Kumar Bhatt, Hari Prasad Devanath, Vivek, and now the family is, uh, mm -hmm. lot more people are there. In every name, every important city, there are my students <laughs> who are uh, yes, doing it on my behalf. I, I have to, I am very thankful to them. Yeah. In fact, you know what happened once Cleveland Sundaram Sahib, um, while felicitating me for some event at Cleveland, he said, he is like Amway, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like his disciples producing 100 disciples, everyone uh, saying that they are learning from Mayville, <laughs> like that. So let it be, whatever, no. I, I didn't expect this to happen, but it is a wonderful thing mm -hmm. which has made me an eternal learner. And it's a wonderful thing for us because as I started out mentioning, it has truly elevated the level of music as a violinist myself. It has challenged me to step up to the plate to be able to I accompany know. your students. I know, I know. Um, so going on the same theme mm -hmm. of scaling up and pursuing these grand endeavors, um, you had briefly mentioned um, Sundaram Mama, who runs the Cleveland Tyagaraja Festival annually. Right. Huge festival, mm -hmm. bringing together students here yeah. through competitions and um, musicians from India. And uh, I would say about two weeks usually of concerts and interactions. And there you were given the opportunity to take on a different role. One as a conductor. Um, sir conducted a Carnatic choir. And I have never seen anything like that before. Mm. I might be mistaken, maybe it has been done, but to that scale, yeah. um, I've never seen right. it done before. So what was the inspiration for breaking out of the traditional teaching and putting together this ensemble? I found out that uh, at least for the past uh, 30 years, teachers have been complaining that our system is very orthodox and so, I mean the system of basic teaching is very orthodox mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't allow for uh, newer concepts though many people were individually mm -hmm. doing so I thought you know through this epic choir effort uh, I can attract more people and sustain them mm -hmm. so it is like you know you give your visiting card and slowly they get, get to know about you so this epic choir will contain songs which will at once attract them yeah. and give you a feeling of that I too can sing. So, but that, that's very interesting because I think what's truly unique about this is Sir was able to do it without diluting Carnatic music. Mm -hmm. For generations, people have been trying to make Carnatic music approachable to a mass crowd, but unfortunately, the music itself has been diluted. Maybe, you know, you take on only light ragas or you combine it with fusion music or you draw a parallel to cinema music. But in his epic Carnatic choir, only yeah. um, songs, I would say, of primarily the Vagya okay. were taken. Maybe not the entire song, but it was done in a way of introducing um, Western concepts such as harmony yeah. and featuring melody. So that's actually very unique and that's what really took me aback and as well as the entire crowd. I didn't plan but I had the dream always I have. I dream always. 
So why I named it as EPIC, you know, the theory part is as important as the practical part in music, but the, when the teacher becomes unpopular, <laughs> when he teaches a lot of theory, <laughs> you know, the youngsters don't want it at that stage. Mm -hmm. So I have created themes, for example, Graha Beda sang Sangamo. Yes. So which will deal with uh, Graha Bedam in elaboration. So they will, it's like uh, an audio essay, musical essay about that particular subject. Mm -hmm. So like that I created one uh, Tiruppa Male, which uh, comprised of uh, songs taken from uh, the hymns called Tiruppa Male, Tiruppallandu, Tiruppavi, like ah. that. So it uh, gives a chance for them to go back. Even the parents have thanked me because they have not never known mm -hmm. such things existed so so then my enthusiasm has got doubled so to introduce newer concepts from our original mm -hmm. music that is my aim. and everything with the primary motivation of being able to draw in people who might not have thought Carnatic music had the scope to be so. um, I guess their particular subject of interest exactly exactly you know there, there are three types of students. One, stu the, the first type will go to the teacher, and whatever the uh, teacher teaches, that is the world of Carnatic music for them. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, level, they listen to many recordings. But these things, what I compose here, is like goes to the basic, like Tevaram. From Tevaram, what songs have been emulated, like that. So much of information. So, for composing one item uh, of 10 minutes, I would spend two months sometimes collecting information, uh, conceiving it, uh, you know, crystallizing it and making it uh, palatable. Yes. Like that. So I like the challenge, but you, the outcome you must see. You see, now what, happen, what has happened is, after this Carnatic, uh, the success of Carnatic Epic Choir in Cleveland, they are doing it in the same scale in Dubai, mm -hmm. in uh, Perth, Australia. Yeah and in India, so many places, London, so it is like that. So, uh, you know, shall I tell you a uh, touch of humor, every portfolio, okay, is trying to divert me from the, my mainstream of being a performer. <laughs> that is my real change, challenge. <laughs> uh -huh. So everywhere if I go conduct and I judge competitions and I um, enact dramas, I compose dance dramas, <laughs> when would I perform? So that is my challenge. I am still an act to perform in a concert. Yes. So you started off as a student and hmm. transitioned to a performer and now you find yourself trying to manage all these uh, other extracurricular pursuits, but yes, it yes. all comes down to being a performer. Yeah, yeah. So what happens, you know, when you teach a, a studious student, okay, an intelligent student, you are compelled to create something new. Always you have to update yourself to keep the student, you know, looking at us with awe. <laughs> <laughs> not, only, not only that, but you know, to impart them something new concept, because uh -huh. some people immediately catch. And they'll be like, sir, uh the two-hour recording we had from yesterday's class, I memorized everything and I can repeat it exactly today. Yeah. So then you must be like, okay, what next? <laughs> yeah. I expected you to struggle with at least something. See, basically, you know, uh, our concept was like, uh, you learn a Kriti, you perfect it for a month, then come to me. But nowadays, as you said, I am, I am here for a week. Mm -hmm. I have to give them the maximum. Also, we're so, able to leverage technology. When you hear a recording, if you hear it, five times in the car ride back home already gives you a level up when you definitely, go to definitely definitely and also concepts you know the our music being creative or manodharma based you know you have to give, give them some uh, new new concepts of parallel thinking and how and all you can do mm -hmm. it and you know a small spark of creativity would come then i have to slowly make it big and give them as a packaged product <laughs> like that <laughs> so um, this challenge to to challenge your students I would mm. say is that what made you um, you know venture into being a composer so a little context I would say of most performers Vidwans in the 21st century 
may, most of them have not composed anything. And out of the few that have, here and there, uh, maybe a few compositions, but Sir stands out in his generation of musicians because he's composed about over 70 um, yeah, compositions from yeah. Gadnams to mm -hmm. songs. and Songs, Tillanas. Tillanas, And yes. even uh, Lakshana Geetams for beginners. <laughs> Lakshana Geetams. For example, I have composed one in uh, Uma Bharanam. Some rare uh, raga, mm -hmm. how it sounds. Before going to the Kriti level, they uh -huh. play like that. Yeah, I have to tell you one thing, how I compose each varna. What oh, is the course. context? Because the thing is, the students ask me. Yes, sir, that's what I was going to say, because ah. I know, um, so one of Sir students, Gita, who's also my friend, told me, she's like, I'm so bored of singing all these Vatnams. I want something new to sing on stage. Yeah. And she said that to Mama, and he composed. <laughs> See, I can as well learn a new Varnam and teach them, but again they will say, oh, it is already sung by somebody. I... So I am compelled to compose. <laughs> that way I have composed nice Varnams, nice Varnams. And everyone is singing. All of my, all my students, even musicians are singing. Exactly. To the extent that, um, for me as an accompanist, be it I would say violinist or rhythmist, Sir has changed the. I guess he's kind of changed the atmosphere so much and infused it with his compositions that now when I go and I um, play for anyone in the Navyali Parampara in the back of my mind, I'm so nervous because I'm like, what if they sing one of his Vatnams that I've never heard before? So I know beginning already, I'm going to have to fish for notes, but it keeps you on your toes. Sure. So like that, I would say, for me, being from uh, the Lalvari school, mm -hmm. I can imagine that when Lalvari sir first came out with his Vagnams and Tilanas, that's how it must have been in the music scene. Exactly. You know, primarily his students performing it. But now, everyone learns Lalvari Vagnams and Tilanas, so I can only imagine that with the next generation to come, it won't only be people in um, Devili sir's school performing his compositions. Okay. I think it'll spread. But let it, let you, it. is that something you feel, yeah. sir? <laughs> that is all, you know. We cannot say, but you know, whatever I have composed, I will see to it that it has a new dimension mm -hmm. and uh, something uh, profound ideas encapsulated in it. Right. Or else I won't compose just like that. Not you know? for the sake of composing. Yeah. It's the inspiration has to come behind it. See, for example, Nenukori Varnam is there. You feed the, the entire notation to a computer, okay, and uh, give a command that it should be in Abhogi. Can even it sing can, a varna. Yeah, it is, is not true. varna. <laughs> so, but always, you know, the inspiration, inspiration. We should not wait for the inspiration to come. We should make it of a second nature. That's what I learned. Where I became a composer, uh -huh. I, I have composed. You know, uh, just for information. When I was uh, even I, before I went to Gurukulavasam. I did some 48 uh, days of uh, Vratam, uh, or what, what, what is Vratam, uh, what do you call it in, some, uh, what to say, it's not penance, Vratam means, <laughs> Vratam means, maybe, uh, Observ observe, uh, uh, observing some Not just austerities, not austerities beyond just meditation. Oh, yeah, like yeah. that, like that, so not eating only once like that, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is very common in uh, Hinduism. Yeah, correct. I yeah. did it and at the end of the 48 days, I sat and took a notebook and I composed one eight, one not eight, eight kritis, one not eight kritis. You have to believe me. And uh, you know, I had just kept it somewhere and I went to Madurai. My Guruji went to my house in Neyveli uh -huh. and my mother gave that notebook to Guruji. <laughs> Guruji brings it to Madurai when I was doing Guru Kalavasa. And he asked me why you didn't tell about <laughs> it. And slowly, I, with hesitation, I sing, uh, I sang two or three kritis. And he gave some suggestions and made some new additions, sankatis and everything. And he sang it for the music season in one of um, Indian fine arts. So like that, it happens. So Yadik uh, Varena, that uh, uh, drive to compose is always there. But mm -hmm. If you if you if you ask me who are you, I wouldn't say I'm a musician. I'm a poet. <laughs> even I would say I, I'm not I'm not even a poet, but I'm a person who wishes to have a poetic vision in, in everything mm -hmm. I do in life. That is my happy ambition goal. <laughs> so it reflects in my composition, singing, uh -huh. teaching, everything. Teaching also I cannot uh, do this monotonous teaching. 
I have to cut a joke here and there. <laughs> Something, something I have to do. <laughs> Make fun of us a little. <laughs> yeah, like that, like that, you know. <laughs> so, you know, fun is fun, fun is fun. That is like true, that. <laughs> that is very true. Um, so, finally, sir, I was actually very taken aback, I would say. My eyes were very open today, speaking to you, because I never realized how much you've done to push the boundaries of Karnatic music. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at your music, I think of someone who is deeply rooted in the Karnatic Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. And someone who has a lot of bhakti towards the Definitely. tradition, the music, and um, you know, the Hinduism behind the music as well. But for someone who on the outside has this conservative appearance towards his music, you are truly innovative and mm -hmm. um, I would say a game changer. You have constantly elevated Carnatic music to different levels, pushed its boundaries, and drawn inspiration <laughs> from traditionally not Carnatic themes. Yeah, yeah. So See, basically, I listen to every genre of music. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have shed tears uh, listening to some Beethoven's, Mozart's, and like that. Uh, basically, it is emotion. You know, emotion is bhakti. Mm -hmm. My concept of bhakti is whatever. Uh, our ancestors have given us, you know, the bhakti towards the creator, the, the, the reverence and thankfulness mm. towards the creator. So that is more important to all of us than music. If the music is not going to lead us to those feelings, mm -hmm. of course, the, 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 the aesthetic and beautiful feelings are there, but again, they are transient and not permanent. So you should have a permanent goal. That is why you have bhakti. So or else you cannot understand Tyagaraja. So at least to understand Tyagaraja's heart, uh -huh. or else you would uh, easily name him as the, the, the choicest, uh, what to say, uh, net man. Our parents are mad man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why he has to lament so much on a that, person that is who is true. not seen? <laughs> Just heard of that drama. Mm -hmm. So you have to visualize. So Bhava has no scientific explanation. It has to be tasted. So that is what is bhakti is. I, but you know, but I How does that bhakti um, combine with the bhakti for music itself? So there's different flavors, right? As you, so you must under, try to, I don't know if any of us can fully understand Tyagaraja's bhakti towards Rama. I can easily, uh, I, in uh -huh. my own way, I can explain to you. It may be useful uh -huh. to you. See, the notes are there. The notes, the seven notes, twelve notes, sixteen notes, whatever. Okay, any note mm -hmm. in, in, in the whole world, in any form of music, has a power to uh, arrest your attention and do something to your heart. Okay, at least to your ears, mm -hmm. something <laughs> to your mind. Okay, <laughs> so when they move, they correspondingly make some movements in your heart. Mm -hmm. Like even a painting is a movement. Everything dance is a movement. Like that, music also. In music, it is combined with that primordial sound, which is the reason for the whole creation, that omkara. Right. So that is the secret that we should know from the Vedas or our from culture. We should not see sound, we should not take uh, sound for granted. We give the utmost importance for the sound, because that is the whole reason for the whole creation. Mm -hmm. So when you immerse in that uh, omkara and see the seven notes as dancing from that, that as a base, that itself is a bhakti. I am not telling, this is Tyagaraja's explanation. Then, the, only the notes cannot give you an idea of the creator. So, you associate a form that is convenient for the mind. Finally, these seven notes, okay, are going to disappear on the base note. And you will go to silence mode. Then you will, don't need Rama or Krishna or nobody. So that is the secret behind it. So now you know how bhakti helps you to take yourself back into yourself. Mm -hmm. Like that. So that is my concept. So I can understand, accept anyone who has a taste in music. I don't expect, honestly, I don't expect them to have bhakti. Uh -huh. If they have, it is an advantageous thing. But it's really interesting to me. I never thought about 
exploring bhakti to understand the intentions of the composer. Because I think early on, as music students, we're so obsessed with perfecting Kamboji Raga, <laughs> or be it whatever, Todi, and then perfecting that, and then in the piece, I must perform, deliver every single Sangadi that my Guruji taught me. That is an and that is, that first encapsulates your mind, and it's only after all of those things come to second nature that you can explore a concept as, let me try to understand the emotion behind Tyagaraja Swami's Really, that's a whole, altogether a different mm -hmm. world of emotions. How many hues he gives, you know? Mm -hmm. So, that's... Maybe uh, why he chooses this ragam to ex like even yeah. express it in the first place. Definitely. So, yeah, that is one way of uh, appreciating him. <laughs> so, here I believe in Western music also, they have appreciation course. So what do you appreciate in music? Mm -hmm. Not only the perfectness and sweetness of Kamboji. So you have to visualize, oh, there is more Kamboji. From this point, there is something more. The performer and the Rasika or the listener should know that. For that, you should know about Tyagaraja. In one raga, he has composed 18 kritis, mm -hmm. like that. How come? So when you think about it, your creative uh, mm -hmm. Uh, instincts also come out. Even Tyagaraja composer, so he's so versatile. So if you take, he's composed Rama Ramana Rara, which you might mm -hmm. teach to a, um, a more small child. Small child. child. Then he's also composed Yantuku Petula, which if you didn't know any better, you mm -hmm. might for a second think, is this a Dikshita Kriti? It's so expansive in a sense. Um, you know, if you didn't, of course, Dikshita mostly composed in Sanskrit. But um, that versatility itself, using Shankara Bhadnam, in su such different ways to emote such different feelings. Um, so, like you said, I think it's very important to understand the intentions and take that step back to have awareness around what it is you are you. attempting to learn and then perform on stage. Definitely, definitely. You know, for me, a concert is a thankfulness to the galaxy of composers. And, and also, Tyagaraj in, in his one of his compositions, he says, you can become me. If you properly understand my composition and sing in the same way I have uh, emotively brought it out, you can become myself. So those secrets are revealed through him. <laughs> That's why he, we hail him as the ultimate. Saint Yaga. <laughs> Sadguru. Sad Sad yes. So like that, there are so many aspects in my music. You know. So the, it also brings uh, humility. Then Tyagaraja says, Yandaro Mahanu Who are we? <laughs> we are nobody. <laughs> we are nobody. So that feeling, humility also. Comes. I feel that way when I hear um, Rama Ni Samana Mandu. When you hear that, and that's the only, that for the first two minutes of the song, that's all that you, you know, To be a composer of that level and to enjoy that in the same level, uh, in fact, this ego, in any form is a hindrance for us. That is why we should not have ego. At least in while appreciating or exercising, performing arts, it's an hindrance. If you just keep your mind as a total rasika, then each bit of Ramani Samaram mm -hmm. will make you dance. Mm -hmm. Inside at least. Isn't it? <laughs> I also I always because you know, when I don't sometimes our mind is dry. After all it is mindless mind is like a monkey. Sometimes you will not get that same emotion that you enjoy while you perform the last time. So our mind will, you know, uh, struggle to go back to that mood. Mm -hmm. Once you have the taste of it, you won't uh, even uh, want anyone's appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> that level it will take you. Uh -huh. So, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I think we have to wrap up because actually Sir's finale is about to start. Everybody's warming up inside. Thank you for joining us on Carnatic Conundrums. Once again, today we were with Guru Neveli, Sri Neveli Ash Santana. Thank you so much.